I think what bothers me mm. is like Dewey's acting is so bad. How f dare you? <laughs> <laughs> friends hey hey been a while it has but we are back with a brand new segment as of right now it's unnamed by the end of editing this video we will probably have a name but for sure what's going on in this new series is we are ranking films in a franchise yes so we are breaking them down we're going to analyze each one just a little bit and at the end we'll give our rankings of what's the best what's the least favorite uh, of that series so, yeah, we start off with Scream. And so good. Yeah, so good. Uh, Scream's an interesting one. What I wanted to say about them overall, though, is they're such fun movies. And mm. we were discussing this when we were watching it, that they don't take themselves too seriously, which is why they work so well. Scream 1, obviously iconic, uh, redefined what the genre could, could be with its uh, self-awareness. You have the iconic opening of Drew Barrymore. You have, you know, the zany performances of Matthew Lillard and Jamie Kennedy, which I think really just, like, their comments on the genre, which was being tired, so exhausted at that point that it was just, there's no life in the genre. And by, you know, commenting on, you know, uh, the final girl and who the suspect could be, it just completely redefined what a horror movie could be, what a slasher movie could be. If they watch Palm Night, they save time. Everybody's a yeah, I don't know if you'd seen, like, those type of characters be the killer at that point. Like, having the funny, goofy guys. But what I loved was that it was fun, and and you were laughing half of the time, but also, like, it was still suspenseful, and you were still like, oh my god, like, run! And I think these movies are fun because you can yell at the screen. Like, I feel... Like, you should watch this with friends and be, like, yelling at the scream. Or at, the, at, the, at the scream! At the screen. Like, in um, the second one, where mm. they're watching a movie about what happened, which was the first movie, but now they're watching that movie, and then you have Jada Pinkett Smith, like, yelling at the screen. Also, like, in the first one, like, you pointed out, like, Jamie Kennedy is watching uh, Jamie Lee Curtis in Halloween. Oh, yeah. And he's telling her, run, Jamie, run! And the killer is right behind, behind you. Jamie Kennedy. And so there's so many meta cleverness going on. So many layers, mm -hmm. you know, that it really, you know, you have to be a smart viewer to really catch up on everything that's going on. Yeah, I thought it was done brilliantly. It's just a fun movie. Um... Yeah. So that brings us to the second one. I personally felt like it needed to amp itself up a little bit more than it did. Um, yeah. Still a fun movie, but I thought it could have been better. It did, like, the same thing, pretty much. I, I just love how they open films and have, like, a little a cameo mm. of people. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's a lot of strong points to Scream too. I think the opening is strong. I think the opening, what it... It kind of comments on fandom going crazy. I love that scene in the theater where all the people are going crazy mm -hmm. and nuts. That seemed to like really speaks volumes on what fandom is now. I really like how uh, the, I like the college setting. I like the use of people like Sarah Michelle Gellar, Joshua Jackson, mm -hmm. and they really capitalized on that. The uh, scene of um, uh, the play with has Nev Campbell doing her performance, whatever, mm -hmm. and you see all those cloaked people. You know, uh, I thought that was a really clever uh, sequence. I think each Scream movie has, like, a really good kill sequence, and that stands out. It's probably one of my favorite of the Yeah, sequences. that was a really good scene. And we were talking about how they had, like, a really good school budget for their college theater. Yeah, um, yeah like, my, when I did a college play, we literally had, like, a black sheet as our background. That was it. That was our budget. So, and, like, cast members... We had to go out with our own money and buy our props. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, and then these they people... They had these elaborate costumes and... Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> what I think Scream 2 lacks is that when you reveal the killers, you don't have that same impact as the first film because mm. you're like, we don't see them as much in the movie. Yeah. And so you're just kind of like, oh, okay, it's just, it's just those guys. So you don't have that connection... Like, with. yeah, like you did in the first one where mm -hmm. it's like, it's her boyfriend and one of her best friends. Like, what? And so, yeah, and that felt convoluted. And I think 
in this fame too misses that zaniness from Matthew Lillard. Uh, even Jamie Kennedy, this go around, it feels like they restricted his funness to be more weird and creepy. I think to add him as a suspect, because mm-hmm. now he's trying to get with Nev Campbell's character. And so I think people are thinking, oh, he's probably going to be the killer because he really wants Nev Campbell. Yeah. And so, yeah. So it, Yeah, I felt like they were trying to go a little more serious route. Yeah. And it, yeah, it, it missed that self-awareness, funniness a little bit. Yeah. And I think they, they probably realize that because when you get to the third, it brings that back. It goes back probably, for me at least, a little too far, where it's, it doesn't take mm-hmm. itself seriously enough, mm-hmm. where it's like, uh, see, I guess we're going to scream three now. Yeah. Um, takes place in Hollywood, and they're making uh, Stab Three, and people uh, are killing the actors who are based off the real-life people in the Scream movies. And um, to me, it's just like, it just doesn't take itself too seriously. It's fine for what it is. But, like, you have cameos from, like, Roger Corman, who's a legendary producer-director, Jay and Silent Bob, who I love, <laughs> but it's like, what the f*** are they doing in this movie? And, like, Carrie Fisher, who plays Princess Leia, obviously, she's in it, and they're like, are you Carrie? And she's like, no. Hey, are you... No. But you look just... Like her? I've been hearing it all my life. It's uncanny. I was up for Princess Leia. I was this close. So who gets it? The one who sleeps with George Lucas. And it's like, it loses that seriousness that the first scream had. Mm-hmm. Um, so, second one wasn't fun enough. Yeah, it, it dragged in the middle. Yeah, and then this one was just too much. It went, took it a little overboard. Mm. Uh, ironically, Scream 3, which is like, you know, I think is just like the most cash grabby, least seriousness of them all. I think it probably has one of the best kill sequences with the fake house set. And the killer is chasing Nev Campbell around the house from the oh, first movie. Yeah. I thought that was really clever. And like how she'll go through a door and it's like an empty set that's mm-hmm. going to nothing. I thought that was really clever. Um, as much as that movie is probably, you know, not as strong as some of the others. I think that one, that scene alone is one of the best, most successful scenes in all of the franchise. Yeah. I like that. And then the secret room. Um, mm-hmm. I thought that scene was very suspenseful because you have the friends trying to figure out how to get in and it looks like she's about to get killed. And right. there's like no way out, no way in. Um, so I thought that was a, a pretty good kill scene as well. This one, this one for me, Nev Campbell, I want to I wanna say I saw this, I read this on the interweb. Nev Campbell asked for a reduced role. And so she isn't in it as much, and it's more of, like, Dewey and Gale, and even more so Gale and uh, Parker Posey's character, who's an actress playing Gale oh, in the yeah. movie. And so it's like kind of like Scream 3 ends up being, like, a buddy cop movie with yeah. Gale and fake Gale. <laughs> Trying to solve these crimes. And... Yeah, and it's like you lose that core foundation that you started off with in mm-hmm. Scream 1, so that's another sense of Scream 3 just kind of being, like, it's its own little thing. Um, yeah. And then you come to Scream 4. Scream 4, yes. Now, I had, when we marathoned this recently, I had seen Scream 1 through 3, and I had a pretty good idea of my ranking for that, but Scream 4, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. And so this was an interesting watch. What, what are your thoughts? So I loved that they brought it back, what was it, like 10 years later? Mm-hmm. Um Starring Emma Roberts and Hayden Panettiere and the other, not Macaulay Culkin, the other Culkin. It still had Courtney Cox, Nev Campbell, and Dewey, and but it was just like way later in life. And I love how they modernized it with like webcams and and high school students today. But the, the beginning sequence was, I think, my favorite out of. Well, the Drew Barrymore one is just iconic. But, like, right. this one is just, like, making fun of itself. There's nobody out here. What does it say? It says, I'm not outside. I'm right beside you. so fucking 
fucking stupid, pure horseshit, the death of horror right here in front of us. There's something real about a guy with a knife who just snaps. It could really happen. I can't do it. These sequels don't know when to stop. They just keep recycling the same shit. Even the opening scene, there's always some random girl who gets a call that undoubtedly ends up getting her killed. It's all so predictable. There's no element of surprise. You can see everything coming. <laughs> ah! Did that surprise you? <clears throat> it's your own fault. <clears throat> Why? Because you talk too much. <laughs> now shut the fuck up and watch the movie. Oh my god, I love it. I've seen it five times and it still gets me every time. You're kidding. I don't get it. You're overthinking it. Am I or did whoever make it just underthink it? There's a reason I don't watch these movies. Did you hear that? Uh... Good one, Marnie. Lights out, phone on the floor. You know, you really should direct horror films. Or ever you are. <laughs> It was just kind of parroting itself at that point. Yeah, so I love that it just makes fun of itself and um, it's starting it off. It just knows how ridiculous it is that it has this many movies and I think this one took it to that next level that it, like, the second and third needed. Right, um, yeah. It just, like, amped it up a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, I think Scream 4 is more in tone with Scream 1 in that the level of satire and seriousness that you take with the killer is on the same tone. Because I feel like the second one didn't have enough satire or parody. Mm -hmm. Third one had too much. too much. And this one is right on par. And um, yeah, I think what this one does that I really appreciated was that the killer, the deaths, are way more brutal in this one. Yeah. Like, when Lucy Hale gets killed, like, she's, she's like, like, covered in blood. Cut uh, open. And the... Yeah, Anthony Anderson gets stabbed in the <laughs> skull. Uh, one girl's, her guts are just chilling on the bed. And one guy gets shot in the dick. And it was, like, it went to the levels where it was, like, in this, you know, at that point, Saw movies were out. And so it kind of needed to up itself in mm -hmm. the kill department. And so I really appreciated that. I think this movie looks really pretty compared to the other ones. Yeah. Just aesthetically, like, it looks so much more cinematic. Um, uh, what they say about remakes and everything, I thought that was interesting. I thought that was appropriate for the time. I don't think, I was trying to think, if you were to make a Scream 5, what would you say on the genre? I think Scream 4, I think that seems to be, like, the last nail in the coffin. I don't know what mm -hmm. you'd say about slashers anymore and so i thought they it didn't feel like a cash grab because it had something else to say about the yeah. genre about remakes and stuff um i think allison brie she is a good character as the nev campbell's publicist mm -hmm. uh i i like the idea of the two Col the colkin and the webcam guy or whatever but i wish they got different actors for those people because mm. they felt so flat and generic yeah but for me, what really stands Scream 4 out from 2 and 3 is the impact of the reveal of the killer. Mm -hmm. Because finally you get to Scream, back to where Scream 1 Lance was, that the killer is Emma Roberts, Nev Campbell's niece. And that's like, whoa. Like, first off, that's a family member. Mm -hmm. And uh, Emma Roberts' performance after she reveals herself as the killer is just so batshit crazy where she's just like has a knife against the wall and just like lunging herself. She like falls back on a glass table and it was like it was simultaneously ridiculous and simultaneously creepy. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that reveal because the who done it aspect of the movies is just so you know that's the foundation of the scream series really. And two and three just kind of yeah. 
you know, shit the bed on that because I was like, we didn't care about who the killer was. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I thought it did a really good job at uh, bringing it back to, like, being characters that you care about and doing a good enough job to where you didn't even expect that it would be those people. So the mm. real reveal was as impactful as it was in the first one. And it, I love the reasoning behind it. <laughs> the reasoning felt relevant because people mm-hmm. want to have a following nowadays with Instagram, Twitter, whatever. And so her rationale for being the killer made more sense than two and three, I felt. Two and three felt kind of like a stretch. So four, yeah, it made more sense. And uh, I like... Nev Campbell recently said in an interview that she might do Scream 5 if, like the screenplay was good. But for me, it's like Scream 4, when you had uh, that Culkin guy tied up like Drew Barrymore's boyfriend was in Scream 1, mm-hmm. that felt like such a full circle moment for me yeah. where it's like, just end of Scream 4, Wes Craven's gone, you know, who knows what Scream 5 director they could bring in and just completely squash. Yeah. It wouldn't feel in canon. And I feel like there's nothing else to say in the genre. So Scream 4, I felt, was a very good completion mm-hmm. to that because scream three that ends with literally the door wide open for yeah. a sequel and this one i just felt like boom yeah i agree complete. and then they made the tv show and uh i thought it was okay okay what was that limp can we just talk about the limp that like was there in the second one and then kind of there in the third and then completely gone in the fourth it's been 10 years he healed he had the magic yeah. The reason I like the limp in two is because it adds him as like a potential suspect as a killer because people, because uh, I was thinking like he's probably putting on that limp just so people don't think he's yeah. the killer. So that's what I think. And then third I one. I feel like it would have had to like show him maybe not limping or like, no, I guess that could be a good reveal. And then by the third one, they're like, oh, shoot. Well, now we know he's not the killer anymore. He saw us have a lamp. Let's just reduce it down a bit. Yeah. And by Scream 4, they're like, F- it. He doesn't have a lamp anymore. Uh, I love David Arquette as Dewey. I think he's he's kind of like, in a way, the heart of the franchise for me. Just because mm-hmm. he's like the Barney Fife character. He's trying to figure out what's going on, but he's not that good at it. <laughs> and so... Uh, and I think, for me, what I want to say about Scream 2, why I think Scream 2 and 3 work at all is because of that Dewey and Gale relationship. Mm. I think they're kind of like the heart of that franchise for those cash grab. If they weren't a part of it, it'd just be like nothing. Yeah. And I hope you propose in the same way that Dewey did. I know this isn't going to work, but... <laughs> yeah. Let's get married anyway. <laughs> yeah. That'll be... If I do get married, that's what I'm going to say. At moments, I felt like I was watching the scary movies. like Right. Because they make fun of Scream, but it's almost like Scream's already doing that. Yeah. With itself. So, I don't know. They're fun. They're still suspenseful. And it's just a good time watching all of them. Yeah, they're very so. clever. So, wh- where do you rank them? So, number four. Scream 2. Okay. It's my least favorite. Okay. Um, and then it would go Scream 3. Okay. And see, I struggle with Scream 4 and 1 because 1 is so iconic, but 4 is just so good. But if we're just talking the movies as themselves, mm-hmm. I think I'd have to say 4 because it did amp it up and the cinematography. From least to greatest, uh, 2, 3... One. What? And then four. I thought you meant four is number two. And then one. I have to go with four being number one. Oh my goodness. See, and they're like pretty close. They like almost tie for first. It's just that cinematography just had what Scream 1 didn't have. But it, it had to do with the time. The time that it was shot. Like... Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm guessing your yours is the same, but has those two flipped? Uh, let's see. All right. So uh, I'm just giving you shit. I don't, you, um, so yeah, my ranking would be... This was so hard for me. Like, I was at Midsummer Scream Convention yesterday, and the whole time I was like, it's this, then that. No, no, no. It's this, then that. And 
So this is super hard for me, but here we go. <gasps> so, all right, so from least to greatest, we have Scream 3. Really? Yeah, because it just doesn't take itself seriously, and yeah, the reveal of the killer is like, who cares? Uh, then, uh, I can't believe I'm saying this. Then Scream 2, then Scream 4, then Scream 1. Because I thought for sure, at one point I had it being 4, 3, 2, 1. And then I had it 3, 4, 2. It changed, like, even on the right here. So you thought you had those placements as 4 being worse than 2? At one point, yeah. <gasps> at one point I had 4 being worse than 3. What? But then I thought because... I think I have a little nostalgia for 2 and 3. Mm. Just because I like those time periods. And I like the Dewey and Gale stories of those. But for me, 4, what really opened my eyes to seeing how great 4 is, is that when you reel M. Roberts as the killer, like I was watching and I was like... <gasps> and I was like making like, what? Huh? What? No! And that was so different from the first time I watched 2 and 3 where mm -hmm. I was like... Oh, it's them too. Okay. Hmm. Okay. And, you know, so I think that's what really opened my eyes to what separates four from two and three. Mm -hmm. Four feels more in tone with one. So yeah. I have to respect that. Yeah. So, yeah. Those are our rankings. If you have any series or uh, franchise is that you want us to check out, let us know in the comments below. Mm -hmm. Shout out to... Patrick Swayze 42 for guessing Love that we Patrick. were doing Scream with the booby and the boob inspector still that we posted from. Yeah, I, I've i seen Scream so many times and I've somehow, this is the first time I saw, there's this quick scene in the police headquarters where there's a hat chilling on a computer that just says boob inspector with two boobs on it. And I was like, Dario, pause it! <laughs> boobs! <laughs> It was so, so funny. So, so yeah, follow us on Instagram at movie blah blah if you want to see hints of what upcoming episodes and chances to get a shout out. Mm -hmm. um, comment below what your order for the movies would be. Did you have three as number one? Is there one diehard Screen Three fan out there who's like, F these guys? Screen Three is the hidden masterpiece. He's gonna be in Indiana for a while. I just got back from Mexico, so it's been like yeah, we're all over the place. Yeah, but we have been trying to post on Instagram mini uh, reviews, so mm. we follow us on there if you don't already, and you'll see like mini reviews of movies that we don't do videos about. Yep. So in the written word. Thanks for watching, guys. Comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Later. <laughs> Oh!